Okay, Christian Livingstone here again, and we're about to uh, enter what I'm calling the world's smallest metal workshop, or metal working shop. And uh, here it is. This is where I do my welding, TIG welding, because uh, I dig the TIG welding process because uh, it can be done uh, indoors without the spatter, the smoke, and uh, the noise. And uh, so, you know, like I said, I, I rent places uh, and uh, that makes it uh, uh, doable for a, a rental place. I won't burn down the, the place I'm renting and, uh, you know, it doesn't present any hazards. You just leave the door open and any uh, oxygen that's burnt up or uh, uh, that argon bottle, it uh, undoubtedly displaces some oxygen, but not very much. You, just leave the door open and uh, there's no real hazard uh, at all. But anyway, here is the uh, new Everlast 210EXT ACDC TIG welder that I purchased. I, I have another uh, uh, TIG welder, but it's just a, a low budget uh, a DC only uh, uh, welder. It actually has a plasma cutter in it too, which is great, but uh, I wanted to step up and do uh, aluminum welding. I'm not prepared to do uh, my aluminum welding project just yet, at least the first one, but I've already completed uh, one project. The first project it's right there uh, with this new welder and that is uh, the compact welding table to replace the one it's uh, lying on top of right there. I burnt up tables and I want to make that one go away. It, uh, this one I think uh, will be a lot uh, nicer to use, easier to move. It turns, you know, sideways so I can uh, shimmy on into this small space and it's got that uh, basket for keeping clamps and, and other things and uh, it's metal. The, the top is metal so I won't burn it up. Anyway, uh, uh, I'm just about to put the finishing touches on that. I, I This uh, expanded metal, I've completed it except there's one uh, break in one of these uh, and I'm just going to tack that and then I'll be done, at least with the welding and uh, any imperfections that uh, are in, uh, you know, the finish or the, the welding uh, itself, uh, you know, like uh, love, paint covers a multitude of sins. So I'm going to paint this thing, but uh, I'm going to really sand it up and smooth it out nice and uh, the latest... Uh, 210 EXTs exposed like this and open and actually I have a chore I'm doing. I'm, I'm going to put a switch on the front because uh, it's just more convenient that way and uh, you know it's just one thing I want to do but I, I kind of want to uh, demonstrate you know what's been going on with this too because uh, it's a brilliant unit and the Everlast people you know, have got a system of support and warranties that uh, are, are brilliant. So I just want to show it because they have a, a website also that has a forum and it's uh, uh, really quite, quite good. And uh, a few years ago, this uh, uh, PowerTig 210 EXT was coming out and what was different about it was, was that it's digital. You know, there's not all the knobs. There's one knob and some touch pads, and uh, I initially uh, purchased a, a different unit, and, uh, you know, I, I almost immediately uh, thought, well, I underbought, you know, I, and, uh, you know, it was in uh, within the 30-day uh, period of satisfaction guaranteed, and uh, sure enough, uh, you know, I sent it back, paid a little more, and got this unit, and uh, I'm digging it. The other one worked uh, well. I uh, uh, welded up, uh, I used it to weld up uh, a little extension tray on my uh, welding cart. But uh, this one is uh, apparently uh, uh, more adept at going down at the lower amperages on aluminum. And that's something I haven't done before, is the aluminum. And that's why I uh, stepped up. I had a previous uh, TIG unit uh, that was DC only and it did very well and you know I owned it for about five years. I still actually got it. I might sell it but uh, uh, I did a lot of groovy projects but uh, you know I came to that place where I, I wished 
I would have had the ability of an AC-DC unit to do the aluminum and, uh, you know, lighten some of the projects I do. Plus, I like uh, uh, a brushed metal finish that, uh, you know, unpainted aluminum and uh, stainless steel can give you. So, you know, it was time that I, I, I think I uh, wanted to and, and decided to uh, uh, get an AC unit. And uh, this baby is right on. And uh, while I'm here, I'm just going to show it to you because uh, over at the uh, Everlast Forum, the initial uh, pictures uh, on the website were, were posted. And uh, there's been some revisions. And it's, it's not the same unit that you might, you know, if you're looking into this unit, you know, you'll see those pictures. And it's a little different now. And I think it's, it's better. You know, the other one was good. And... Uh, brilliant too and you know undoubtedly uh, many of the uh, components inside are, are unchanged but uh, the uh, externals are different in that they seem to have gone back to the uh, single saddle uh, uh, sheet metal style uh, uh, piece that just you know goes right over it uh, the earliest model had two side panels and a top panel and uh, you know I, I kind of like the old uh, uh, simpler way you know Less is more to me sometimes, and uh, that's fine because uh, it now is also a little, a little larger than the earlier unit. The er earlier unit uh, uh, looked a little different, and this has the same exact dimensions, uh, at least the length and the width, as the uh, Power TIG uh, 200 uh, DX slash DV. You know, so it's it's not a small unit anymore. Initially, I think it was smaller, but it's still lighter. This, I think, is about 10 pounds lighter than that uh, uh, DXDV unit. So here is just, you know, what it looks like inside. I'll go over to the other side. We'll talk about the front and the back for a second. Okay, here's the other side. Uh, you know, most of this stuff, I don't know what I'm looking at, but uh, it looks darn tidy and... Uh, you can see it's not really heavy laden with uh, wiring harnesses. Everything has been uh, reduced as in that way, I think. Uh, you know, especially over the uh, analog units with all the uh, knobs and uh, switches up front. You know, you get a lot of a lot of wiring, and that front panel, that's it from behind, is you know got a ribbon connector there, and so it's uh, very clean and in its execution. One thing, there's the solenoid down there to the gas. Now, on the uh, earlier uh, edition of this unit, uh, they did have the uh, uh, quick uh, release uh, fitting back here. And this one isn't, it's a screw on. And uh, I think I'm going to, uh, I have a fitting that will go in that. And, uh, and also some uh, of the quick uh, fittings uh, coming. The, uh, you know, the, just much like uh, a compressor fitting, quick connect, and uh, uh, they're handy, so I'm going to put a little pigtail. I've got the high frequency uh, ground uh, pigtail put on here. I'll put a pigtail for this, and uh, I'm going to be doing something with the, the power uh, cord too, maybe a pigtail too, so you know I can just disconnect it and take it out uh, for stick welding and then plug it back in. I don't know. So uh, what also is different with this uh, latest edition is, uh, I believe on the uh, earlier edition, they didn't have this uh, 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 outlet for a water cooler. And, and that's really a cool feature, I think. Not that I'm going to use it, but uh, uh, it means that uh, you can plug a water cooler for your torch right into the back of this. And then when you power up, uh, it starts, uh, the water cooler starts uh, at the same time as the welder, so you never have a problem that, you know, the water cooler on your torch is, is not running because, you know, you could burn it up that way, undoubtedly. So uh, it's nice that this is here. And this is also uh, dual voltage. This unit is dual voltage, and uh, I think previously uh, on uh, many of the models of the Everlast stuff, this was a 220 uh, uh, outlet only, but now it's uh, it goes either way. So, you know, if you have a uh, 
a 220 water cooler from Everlast, you know, it'll undoubtedly run at uh, 220, but, uh, you know, you should be mindful if you do plug in the, uh, the 110 cord, uh, you know, it, it won't run uh, a 220. So uh, they have another water cooler that is both. It'll sense whichever one and the water cooler will run on either one. So I think this is a, a, a cool feature that uh, ever lasts because, you know, you have fewer plugs and just one switch uh, makes it all go together well. And uh, notice these four uh, fans here. And uh, I'm not sure what uh, number of fans were on the uh, earlier version, but... Uh, I'm thinking maybe it was two, you know, and you see four fans here, but the uh, interesting thing is with the four fans, this baby is, is whisper quiet. I mean, you know, it is really nice and quiet compared to say the uh, 200DX. And, uh, you know, that's important to me uh, to a degree because I'm not in a shop environment. I do all my work right behind that door there. And, you know, that's where that uh, dual rear wheel drive electric hand cycle was built, right inside there. It's a little laundry uh, closet, and I think it's the world's smallest shop. So, you know, I like this unit being so quiet because you know, in a tighter space, uh, you know, the sound uh, collects more. And, you know, I'm uh, almost always listening to loud music. So, you know, I like to hear the music more than, than the equipment. Okay, here's the front and uh, the whole front panel, the, uh, I don't know what you'd call this, the face of the uh, unit is uh, just like the uh, 200DX. And uh, I think it's a good, good move they made. Uh, undoubtedly it's uh you know easier to manufacture if you're already doing them this way why have two you know but uh it's a good looking uh uh design angular squared it uh you know it's kind of Darth Vader looking but uh you don't see any knobs now except this one the uh, uh initial unit did have two knobs they had a second knob for the uh AC balance and uh, you know i think it's really smarter that they just dropped that and integrated it into this uh, selector here and uh, uh, you know because you could get carried away with oh does this need another knob honestly this is that plate I'm this is where this uh, switch I was talking about I'm gonna try to shoehorn that baby in there and put that plate uh, and face it off nice but we'll see how that goes but back to this uh, so this schematic here, undoubtedly, if you're, uh, uh, you know, interested in TIG welding, you'll understand what all this stuff uh, is about. Each one of the steps in the TIG process or, you know, the TIG uh, physics is, is represented there. And uh, it's not hard to understand. Basically, uh, it's just this selector button and the, and the dial and uh, you're, you're off and running. Once you set some of these other settings, and there's a memory too. I'll, I'll get back to this more when I've got the unit powered up so you can see, see uh, you know, all the lights and stuff. But uh, I did, I, uh, I kind of resisted the idea of the digital. They do cost a little more. And, uh, you know, I thought, oh, I'm, a, I'm an analog guy. You know, I like my knobs. I like to see what I'm doing. But honestly, with all the knobs, you know, I was often squinting to look underneath the knob for its label and just double checking. So uh, this takes some of it away. It throws a light right where you're, uh, uh, you know, considering making adjustments. And uh, another thing on the uh, earlier uh, panel, these uh, uh, arrow icons were not as high a contrast as these. And I think that was... Uh, Everlast uh, kind of shaping kind of the layout of, of this because uh, the earlier ones were kind of a gray background and it just uh, this black and white contrast is, is really really good so yeah it's uh, straightforward and uh, you know on the very first day which was just the other day I'm still still in my 30 day period and uh, uh, you know I, I might <laughs> I might go ahead and cut this open here so that's gonna undoubtedly uh, ruin my 
30-day portion of the 100% uh, satisfaction guarantee, but uh, I'm so confident that, uh, you know, this unit is going to be great, and, uh, you know, Everlast has already impressed me that, uh, you know, their warranty of, of satisfaction guarantee is, is real, you know, so, and I've already really demonstrated that uh, to myself, so. And uh, not only that, the uh, uh, first day, I think it was yesterday, uh, no, it was Friday. Today is Sunday. Uh, I called Friday. I, I did have a little problem initially in, in uh, how I set this up. I was uh, welding something real, real quickly, and uh, I was using higher amperage, and I had a, a, a pre-flow setting a little high, and uh, my uh, argon flow was a little high. But at the high amperage, it, it was fine. But then I dropped down to, uh, oh, I, something real low just to check and see, see its performance down to about uh, 35 amps. And uh, uh, it seemed like I lost the uh, high frequency uh, starting. And, uh, oh, I was worried because I was just plugging this thing in and I had the uh, stereo uh, on the same uh, circuit, uh, you know, as back there, there's a plug right behind it, and the uh, uh, dryer plug is right inside that door, and, you know, running both of these uh, through the breaker. So, you know, you can see I, I uh, moved the plug down to another circuit, and, uh, you know, it's, it's fine now. I can run the welder and the stereo, and it doesn't throw the breaker. So, uh, I thought, oh, maybe, uh, you know, when I plugged it in, unplugged it, and threw the breaker, maybe I fried the high frequency, you know, and, you know, I kept welding. I just did scratch start, but I thought, oh, you know, it's, you know, it's maybe delicate, and this is sophisticated, and it's digital. Ooh, ooh, and maybe I messed it up on my maiden voyage, so to speak, and uh, no, I didn't. It was just lowering that... Uh, Amperage, I had other settings that were uh, uh, higher, and uh, that's all it was. I, uh, I called the uh, Everlast support number, and, uh, you know, they took a message because they were apparently dealing with somebody else, and, uh, you know, 15, 20 minutes later, I get a call, and, you know, uh, he just uh, put me through my paces, double-checked uh, my settings, and he said, oh, yeah, that one, and, you know, uh, tune down your gas if you're using the gas lamp in a neck down cup like that, you know, those two settings. And sure enough, I made those minor adjustments and boom, I was off and running uh, with high frequency starts uh, just like before. So, you know, there's more adjustments on this and, uh, you know, my old unit wasn't so adjustable. So, you know, these adjustments do uh, have consequences. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so that's just another thing about the uh, uh, Everlast support. You know, it's real, too. You know, you call them. You don't have to tell them your serial number or tell them your name or when you bought it. You just call them, tell them what model you got, what problem you're having, and a, a very competent person will uh, uh, get you going probably, uh, you know, like was the case with me. But, you know, I don't know what other uh, things are going on, but... Uh, for me, it was, uh, you know, it was just another evidence that uh, Everlast is, uh, is groovy. Okay, I'm set up here, and I'll uh, just get to tacking that uh, broken spot on the uh, expanded metal. And I've got about 45 amps uh, set there, and uh, about uh, 12 cubic feet on the uh, argon. And, uh, you know, this is the lightweight stuff that uh, undoubtedly will, uh, you know, happen on uh, aluminum as well. So just kind of starting and stopping, kind of like a pulse. Not that I'm an expert on pulse, but uh, I'll be using it pretty soon. On a DC like this, uh, I believe uh, you can set uh, set it to pulse as well. I, I'm not sure if you can pulse on DC. I, I think you can, but, uh, you know, just starting and stopping is much like the pulse action. And I believe that uh, uh, 
auto body workers, you know, they generally use a, a MIG welder. And MIG welders uh, don't really have a pulse cycle. I think maybe the newest ones are starting to implement that as a feature. But generally, uh, you know, if you want to get a pulse out of a MIG welder, you got to on, off. And that's what they call step welding, uh, I believe. I, I'm no expert, but, uh, you know, I get the idea and I just intuitively do it. Tack jump to the other side, tack, put a bead, until the two come together and then join and blah, blah, blah. But now they're joined and I'll just heat them up to kind of smooth it down a little bit. There's a big blob on there, which I don't mind because uh, I'll grind that down and it'll uh, end up looking like just the rest of the expanded metal it will be uniform but for right now I've got more metal on there than you know you would expect and that's a that's a good thing it's better to have more than less I think in this case and there it is so yeah I'll uh, grind that down and uh, that'll be the end of the welding and uh, most of the grinding a little more sanding to do and then uh, you know, I'll show you it when it's upright and maybe got some clamps and tools and squares uh, held in that basket there. So, yeah. And here we are with the uh, included extras with the uh, Everlast Power TIG 210 EXT. And let me tell you, they are numerous, the extras that come uh, with the welder. And, uh, you know, that's where most most uh, reviews will begin with you know what comes with it and you know usually I think uh, the reviewers will you know begin to pick apart because these items are usually not produced you know by the same factory that's making the welder they'll uh, procure and include a package that is helpful and uh, you know with the uh, so-called American uh, welders like the the Lincoln's and the uh, Miller's uh, you know like I, I say so-called because uh, I believe it's the uh, Lincoln's that have their uh, uh, electronic boards uh, you know they're made in China and they're just shipped over here and assembled uh, you know into the uh, housing and you know they're called American made but uh, they're really American assembled I, I think maybe the uh, Miller's uh, could be uh, uh, produced here, their electronics and boards and stuff, but uh, I'm not so certain. But uh, I do know that when you buy a Lincoln or a Miller that you're, you know, you're not going to get all this stuff. You're, you're probably going to get a bare tool. You're undoubtedly not going to get a foot pedal and you're not going to get a torch. And uh, surprisingly, this particular model, the 210 EXT, uh, Everlast includes two torches, and that's uh, really surprising. I, I honestly don't know why they did that, but, uh, you know, more is better sometimes. And uh, this is the uh, 26 series uh, torch here. And I uh, especially like this because this has got the two into one uh, hose for the uh, torch and the uh, power, which is good. And, the, uh, this is a Series 9 torch. This is a lower amperage torch, lighter, a little more nimble, but uh, they've got the uh, uh, power and the uh, um, uh, gas uh, line separated on that. And, you know, that adds maybe to a little more rigidity when you've got more strands going through uh, this uh, uh, housing here. It, it might not be as flexible. So, you know, it's a small point, but, uh, uh, you know, it's included. There it is. It's uh, uh, included, and uh, it's a lighter torch. And you even get uh, some uh, consumables that come with both, both of those torches. So it's uh, really a, a cool package. And as you can see, this is not some big, clunky uh, foot pedal that uh, Everlast includes. This is a pretty... Uh, pretty nicely uh, uh, done uh, foot pedal. So uh, I think it's uh, better than you'll uh, get with most any other welder. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's it's not clunky. <laughs> but uh, as well, the uh, flow meter here, you know, usually uh, a welder uh, will come 
with a gauge, you know, a CO2 argon type gauge, and you'll have about two gauges here. But, uh, you know, it's preferable to have a flow meter here. You can dial it in a little bit uh, uh, better, and uh, I think it even conserves on gas. I already have one and upgraded to a flow meter uh, on my uh, uh, first TIG welder, and I'm still using that. It might be a little better quality than this, but I doubt it. This looks just as good as the uh, after uh, market one I bought and uh, but uh, you know I'm used to using it I actually like my hose better so I'm gonna just leave this uh, off of my uh, Everlast welder and uh, I'll include this with my old welder when I sell it I'll uh, just give them this one but uh, it's every bit as good as the one I got on there no doubt and notice that you get a stinger with the uh, Everlast and uh, also a, a nice heavy duty clamp. I'm using a different clamp. This one's uh, undoubtedly considered by most to be a better quality one than, I, than I'm using, but I like the cheaper one. This one takes a pretty good Gorilla grip and uh, you know I just uh, I don't prefer it, but uh, it's undoubtedly uh, uh, better quality than you'll get with uh, almost any other welder uh, uh, package. Uh, that you'll find out there. I'm, I'm pretty sure of that. So this is, uh, you know, the stuff you get. And uh, like I said, the American welders, uh, you know, they're pretty much uh, the bare tool. You, you won't get all this stuff, but, uh, you know, when you uh, buy the Chinese uh, welders, you'll find they're, they're more accommodating in these uh, respects. They're a little more generous. And Okay, so here we are, and here's the Everlast uh, website, and I'm uh, right on the exact unit we're talking about, the 210 EXT. And you can see this uh, image right here is the uh, original uh, version, and it, it was a smaller uh, uh, size, I believe. And you can see there's two side panels and a top panel, and there's uh, two knobs on the uh, front uh, uh, face there and uh, this connector I believe was a little different too and the back was different but uh, down here it, it shows additional images and this is the actual current uh, uh, version that you'll get it looks like the 200 uh, DV or DX and it's a little larger in size I believe all the insides are uh, similar but uh, as you can see there's only one knob now and there's higher contrast uh, uh, push uh, pad uh, keys there. So some things have changed, but uh, uh, I believe the function is uh, uh, identical as far as uh, uh, how well it does and, and the uh, electronics. And uh, speaking of which, that uh, Jody at WeldingTipsAndTricks.com, I downloaded two of those videos and I'll just uh, fire them up right here so you can see him putting this exact unit uh, through its paces and you know he hey, was Jody really with welding so, tips and tricks .com. Uh, today you know, what about really for you a bunch of random TIG welding jobs but he puts it through All the paces power TIG, and I'll just 210 skip through session. some of them but this this particular so video this nine random done, tasks much, it's only about an inch is wide. what uh, really uh, uh, so I did four and away. there's actually two of these parts for and let's thing, see but sometimes you can get by with a very simple little repair if it just got into a rock. You can uh, make a template out of cardboard that you know he can actually get the, get the shape film really close the, uh, to all the other and uh, the arc performance. Veins. Pretty well for an edge weld. He's on a boat prop there. And did a little wash blending prior to the machine and the three thirty second up pretty sharp. Yeah, it, I was able to, to do just fine on a little box cutter blade. Blades there. And with it clamped to that uh, aluminum angle, it's almost like having an argon purge on the back side. Not quite as good, but almost. And then I tested out the high end of it, messing around. I got some half inch thick 4140, and just to see how it would do. And you can see that's a smooth arc. It does just fine. Plenty of power. It's about 150 amps right here. Just using the foot pedal to, uh, to kind of feather when I get to the ends. So no surprises there. It's capable of doing something thick and something thin. And then uh, 
Then I'll jump over to this other uh, video he did where he puts it, it up against uh, and two of the uh, uh, industry the leading uh, welders of its time. Different uh, small TIG inverters in the 200 amp range. A Miller Dynasty 200 DX is the first generation. It's about 11 or 12 years old, and a Lincoln V205T that's on loan for this video, and a Everlast 210 EXT, which is a new machine that I've been field testing for Everlast, giving them some feedback on it and things that they need to work on. First, we're going to take a look at the Miller. Good bit of cleaning action, a pretty good clean puddle. 65. AC frequency set on 100. Here's the Everlast. Trying to keep things the same, but inevitably, you know, since I'm welding these manually, I'm welding a little faster or slower just uh, just because, who knows why, just because it's a human error thing. But all three of them welded uh, pretty comparably, to be honest. You can see that had a good bit of cleaning little etching zone outside pretty smooth arc yeah dynamite and the price is uh, about half at $17.99 you might be able to go on Amazon.com uh, they uh, market these there directly as well so you can buy them uh, from uh, Everlast right on Amazon and sometimes they'll run a sale at uh, Amazon you can okay there it is the uh, First project completed with the Everlast welder, my new welder. I'm digging the welder. I'm digging the uh, first new project. It's a uh, compact uh, welding table that uh, is uh, really well suited, I think, for this space, as small as it is. I can move it around. And it's got, uh, you know, width and uh, not too much depth, so, uh, you know, I can uh, make more use out of this space. But uh, also, it has that uh, nice little uh, basket or bin for all the things that, you know, will probably uh, be uh, handy to have uh, right with the table. And as you can see, I've got those uh, two clamps that can be moved around in those four holes. So, you know, I can pin things down, hold them down, tack them down so they don't move so much uh, as I'm welding joints and other things. So, uh, maybe I'll do that. Uh, Maybe I'll uh, take a stab at uh, doing a little uh, practice on the aluminum. I haven't done that yet. This project was all uh, mild steel, but uh, that's, uh, that's the direction I'm going, you know, towards the uh, aluminum. And that's the reason why I bought this uh, welder, because it's AC. It allows me to do that. But, uh, you know, I, I had a little uh, apprehensiveness about the aluminum, because I know it's a little uh, trickier. And, and this kind of stuff and projects I want to uh, do and, and use, uh, the material will be thin like this. And I, uh, my first aluminum project, I think, is going to be uh, reproducing a chain guard uh, uh, to uh, replace this. This is mild steel. It's very flimsy. And uh, I'm going to make uh, a chain guard uh, out of this uh, uh, diamond plate aluminum. And it's going to go on a... Uh, uh, an adult trike. Not for me, but uh, it's a step through trike and uh, that uh, chain guard there, that blue one, you know, will undoubtedly get bent and, and knocked around and, you know, it's a painted finish and that's what uh, I like aluminum and stainless steel for. You can just brush those uh, uh, metals and not have to paint them and, you know, I'm undoubtedly going to do what I did here with the expanded or the uh, diamond plate for a, a chain guard and this one you know was done with the mild steel which you know I have no hesitation getting right in there but uh, like I said I've got a little apprehensiveness about uh, getting in there with the uh, aluminum because it, it is undoubtedly a little trickier but uh, you know as far as the fabrication uh, method, that's it. You know, it's I'm going to be doing the same thing. So this is on the uh, electric hand cycle. But, uh, you know, the, the things I did here, you know, added up the weight. Now, that could have been done with aluminum. And when I, uh, when I uh, put that second battery box underneath, I made that out of uh, the thinnest diamond plate I could find. And, you know, it was almost uh, 
I don't know, 20% larger, more uh, uh, metal being used. So just the box itself was heavy, and I, I really didn't like that. I much uh, rather would have uh, made that out of aluminum, but uh, you know, I just wasn't up to speed. And you can see I'm a Christian anarchist, so I've got my uh, license plate there, so. I don't know, you may know from some of my other videos, I'm not enrolled in the state in any way, no social security numbers, no driver's license, no birth certificate usage, I don't rely on any of those hostile demands of the state, but uh, I do want to uh, use the uh, aluminum uh, material instead of some of this uh, mild steel just because it's lighter and it's uh, stiff enough and uh, we'll see how it goes okay and here we are with the uh, front panel and uh, the interface of this new uh, uh, Everlast welder and I, I think I mentioned that I would show you how this uh, uh, functions and how to navigate the interface and uh, let's go ahead and do that now as you can see I'm on uh, number one here this has a memory and I I believe it's nine up to nine uh, uh, memory settings you can set it on and I have this just on a very very basic uh, method of uh, welding it's a uh, DC you can see I'm on DC here if I wanted to change it to AC I can go up to here and get those three different uh, wave forms, but I'm not going to do that. I'll just cycle back to DC, leave it here. But even if I did uh, cycle up to here, did some other uh, welding at that setting, if I turn this off, it won't save that setting unless you come up here and you hold it down for about three seconds, let off. If you see that green light, then it'll go back down to the red. It saved it. Now my first selection is on an AC setting, but I really don't like that. So I'm going to cycle back through, put it back down to DC, and save three seconds. So, so now it's back to where it was. But uh, And that's kind of nice that you have to save because, uh, you know, you might just want to do something on the fly, change the uh, amperage, and uh, then want it to come back, uh, you know, when you start up the next day or the next hour or whenever, that everything's the same on that first memory setting. So that's what I'm tending to do here. I'm tending to leave this number one memory setting, that's all I've been using, is uh, on the mild steel, the DC setting. I haven't been using pulse, I haven't been using down slope. Like I said, I've been just using it in the 2T uh, function, and undoubtedly I'll get to the uh, uh, 4T uh, uh, setting here with the, the down slope and all that stuff, and, and get a little more advanced uh, uh, in some of the settings. But uh, for now, I'm just using it simply. But since I will be uh, doing some aluminum pretty soon, at least testing on little uh, scrap pieces, uh, Let's go ahead and, and set set up, uh, let's uh, do a number two memory, and we'll set that up for aluminum in a kind of a standard rudimentary uh, 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 setup for aluminum. But first I'll show you in this first setting how it goes. Uh, once you're in DC, that's where you want it. You got the 2T setting, 4T setting, the pedal. On this is just a 2T, simple. If you want to change it, one, two, three, back to to that. Oh, no. That's a double setting. I don't want that. So there we go. Back to just 2T. Uh, the pulse setting is off on the uh, DC, but I believe I can get uh, standard or the advanced pulse. Uh, maybe not the advanced pulse on uh, DC. Yeah, see, it, it switched up to AC. So you don't get the advanced pulse on DC, but you get uh, just a plain old uh, standard AC. Let's see if it drops back down on the AC. Back to DC. No, apparently it didn't. So we'll just put it back. But anyway, you can pulse on DC, but I don't I don't want to do that. No, let me just change it again. So back to DC. No pulse. Um, 
And uh, of course we got over here the uh, uh, high frequency uh, start, you can do lift start, and then you can shift to the uh, uh, stick uh, functions over here. And, you know, we don't want to do that. High frequency starts are undoubtedly uh, what, you know, just about everybody's going to want to do. Unless you're in a, a hospital environment, uh, the high frequency, uh, uh, you know, momentarily to initiate the arc will cause some interference to, uh, you know, wireless connections and stuff. And uh, even my old welder uh, would do that. And there is a, a, a way to uh, help combat that in uh, setting up the uh, the uh, ground, a direct ground outside. But uh, you know, that's that's what I did. I, I uh, uh, staked the ground out there, and I have a quick connect to uh, do that because my music and my uh, video uh, coming from my computer go out to this uh, uh, stereo and uh, big screen TV, and so. You know, sometimes when I would initiate the arc, it would interfere with the music being played. Only momentarily, maybe, I don't know, three to five, eight seconds, the music would cut out and uh, come back on. So, uh, you know, I'd rather not have that happen. It, it only happened occasionally, but, uh, you know, I'd rather not have it. So I, I do. I uh, have that ground going outside, and uh, the high frequency then doesn't, doesn't interfere. Okay, so here's the schematic, here's the diagram, and uh, you select it with this big green arrow here, and, uh, you know, it always lands on this uh, welding amps, and you can see it by the red light, it says welding amps, and there's the number of uh, amps that it's set to, and uh, there's just one dial, which is nice, and, uh, you know, you just change the, the amps that way, or you can push it in, and it'll go in... Uh, 10 uh, amp increments, which can move you a little quicker. It's either way, it's all good. So you got the uh, the one dial, and uh, that's the primary setting. It just lands on the amps. But uh, to step you through all these settings, see if if you're not using some of the other settings, you, it'll just skip over some of those. So over here, you'll see the. Uh, uh, pulse functions and you don't get the AC balance on DC so you know it won't stop here and uh, it won't stop here on these pulse functions when you're set uh, the way it is in a very rudimentary fashion so you'll see it'll probably jump over to here down slope I don't even have uh, I'm, I'm not yeah see it did it jumped all the way but I'm not setting down slope on, on it uh, and you know Later I'll do that, and especially for the uh, aluminum, that becomes more critical in uh, ending up with, uh, uh, at the end of your bead, not having a crater that could, could crack. So, so I'm going to ignore that. And you can see it already reset to there since I didn't do anything here. So jumps to downslope, ending amps, uh, post flow. Do I got any post flow? Yeah. Okay. I wonder why I'm not over here on pre-flow. Let's do that. One, two, three. Post flow there. There we go. Pre-flow I got. I don't have anything set on pre-flow. I should probably have a slight uh, percentage of a second on pre-flow. And see it all already beat me so you got to move pretty fast on this or it'll keep going back to upslope I don't want to do that uh, downslope don't want to do that post flow I got three seconds there we go okay so that's it this is on a rudimentary setting uh, I like where it's at but uh, what we'll do is we'll go to uh, but let me just say that, whatever, whatever I've changed there, it might have been slight, but uh, I'll just say that to make sure it's in. I think I had uh, a little touch of pre-flow there. And pre-flow can be a little tricky if, if you're not aware of it. It, it seems like your uh, high frequency start is 
not taking, but you just got to be patient. It'll come. So let's do that. Let's uh, switch to another memory. Let's go to 2. I don't know. Whatever the factory had on 2 is what it is, but uh, we'll change it. We'll change it to AC. And, uh, let's go up here. Wait, now this is set up for stick. We don't want stick. Menu. So we'll go to high frequency start. So this seems the, the best place to start. It'll dictate, you know, do this first before everything else changes. We're going to make this AC and stick it with the advanced uh, square wave. That's the typical wave you'll find. Uh, I'm going to leave it at 2T for the moment on this. Uh, TIG pulse will skip the TIG and uh, let's put it through the paces on the schematic here. So welding amps is, I don't know what we want to start at, let's call it uh, 75 and uh, put it through the paces. The AC balance, that's the cleaning action. Let me see, 50 seems a little high. See, I. If you clean the metal real well, you don't need to have it that high, so I'm going to drop it down to 20, and uh, I believe the uh, Everlast has a, a different uh, uh, method or attitude about the cleaning action, whereas uh, I believe the uh, Millers and the Lincolns uh, have their setting like uh, a 30... Uh, on the Everlast would be a 70 on the uh, other uh, units because uh, they're talking about the uh, electrode negative. The AC-DC goes uh, uh, negative positive, uh, 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 negative, back and forth, back and forth, and the welding occurs, the penetration, the real heat occurs on the negative uh, setting and uh, the more negative you have, the more penetration, the less cleaning. So, uh, you know, 70% is 30% uh, uh, to the Everlast. So, you know, the lower you go on the uh, cleaning, here would be a higher uh, percentage on their machines. It's just a different way of looking at it. but. Uh, from what I understand, you know, less is more. If you can get away with as little cleaning action as possible, it's better because, you know, you'll be uh, getting better penetration. You won't leave that, uh, you know, cloudy, uh, milky uh, 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 trail on each side of the puddle. So you want to keep that as close as you can and still get the good cleaning action and have a nice shiny puddle. So that's where I'm putting it to begin with because uh, I'll undoubtedly uh, uh, do a lot of cleaning uh, on the metal firstly, not with acetone or anything, but just with some mechanical action with a nice wire brush on the uh, drill. Okay, so there's the cleaning action. Uh, AC frequency, let's go ahead and set that. A typical frequency uh, for uh, uh, AC welding has been in the past 60 Hertz and uh, you can see these specify what you're actually adjusting. This one's Hertz, this one is amperage, this one is seconds, this one is percentage, but that Hertz is what the uh, is what the frequency is in Hertz and uh, it has a certain sound. You know, the faster the Hertz is set at, you know, the higher buzz you'll get and so uh, uh, from what I understand most guys uh, nowadays are liking a little higher uh, frequency on the AC rather than just 60 they're going up to 100 and 120 and uh, this uh, machine certainly does that so let's get on up there and start out at 120 and leave it there and not only that the higher Hertz will give your uh, uh, puddles uh, a little more narrowness. They won't be spread out so much. And uh, that's a good thing. You know, the tighter uh, uh, a uh, puddle you can have, I think, the better. Unless, you know, you've got something specific you're doing that you want to lay down a nice wide puddle. But, you know, a lot of guys will give a second pass anyway or, you know, 
put a bead right next to a bead and lay down all kinds of different uh, patterns and join things in, in that way too. So that's where I'm starting at. I'm starting at 120. And then let's see what comes up next. Down slope. Eh, I'm not going to worry about down slope for the moment. So that's our rudimentary, uh, well, I do want some post flow. Let me double check post flow. We're at three seconds, that's good. I like that. It, you know, it could be a little more. The more amperage you get, the, the more post flow you get. But I'll probably be uh, using very uh, uh, few amps uh, on some light stuff. So I'm thinking, uh, I don't know, three will be fine. So there's our rudimentary setting on aluminum, and uh, it has to do with uh, the intellectual property, uh, you know, in North America. You know, uh, a couple hundred years ago when they held that secret meeting called the, uh, you know, the uh, United States Constitution writing, you know, it wasn't open to the public. It was a secret meeting, and if you ever read the U.S. Constitution, you'll... Uh, see that it mentions things like patents and copyrights and corporations and slavery and you know it imported all of those ideas from the uh you know the so-called old world into the new world you know when they had the revolution sure it was great they threw off the british yoke but uh then they went ahead and imported all that same old stuff onto uh the north american continent and you know it's like the you know, meet the new boss the same as the old boss. And it's actually worse today. The things uh, that were complained about in the uh, uh, Declaration of Independence seem very minor and trivial compared to what Americans tolerate from a, a central government uh, now. But anyway, uh, in 1789, they had that secret meeting and they came up with uh, all the same old stuff that, uh, you know, the monarchies were uh, uh, granting to uh, the mercantilist uh, society there. All these little monopolies, things like patents and copyrights. And those are, they are, uh, you know, they're anti-free market. They create little monopolies. And, uh, you know, American corporations have taken advantage of it because there they were. They were instituted into the, the federal state uh, and, uh, you know, the states, uh, you know, enjoined uh, in that. And uh, now, you know, uh, not only do the American products uh, implement the uh, intellectual property, things like patents, but, you know, they do things uh, for the reason of creating little monopolies, even if, you know, a welder can't be uh, uh, patented, and, and, you know, it's not original anymore. Uh, you know, a Chinese company can produce, and, and a factory can produce uh, a welder just as good as anybody else. But uh, what the American companies will do, I find, is they'll include new kinds of uh, patents for their, you know, proprietary uh, fittings and connectors. And so, you know, the Chinese tend not to do that. They tend to make everything interchangeable without proprietary designs on how things fit together. So you'll often find uh, just every all the uh, consumables you want to buy or different torches, you want to upgrade the torch, no problem on the connectors. All this stuff, uh, you know, the Chinese don't rely on, you know, proprietary connectors like uh, I think the Lincoln and the uh, Miller certainly do. I'm not saying across the board, but, uh, you know, they try to force you back to their uh, products for, for the consumables and upgrades and stuff or things that wear out. Uh, you know, they, they want you to come back to them. And I kind of like how the uh, Chinese products tend not to do that. And, you know, sure, they undoubtedly have patents of their own, but I, I believe they do it more in a defensive manner. Not to really create monopolies, but just so that, uh, you know, they can produce their stuff without uh, somebody suing them. So they have patents too, but there is a, a difference in the way uh, patents are used. I believe the Chinese uh, are more about uh, creating value, creating products that people can buy, 
uh, more cost effectively. They're not trying to create little monopolies so much. And so uh, for that reason and, and others, uh, they've earned my business and uh, I'm happy to support them. My, uh, my love doesn't stop at uh, some, you know, politically arbitrary boundary. And, uh, you know, to me, it's not, uh, you know, we're for us. I, I'm for everybody. And uh, God bless the Chinese. They're, they're hard workers and they're putting out great products. And, uh, you know, I support that regardless of how far away in mileage and just because maybe some of them don't wave a, a red, white, and blue flag, I don't care. You know, I, I kind of like that, uh, you know, people want to get away from that red, white, and blue and, you know, all the oppression and domination and, and monopolies they've done around the world. So, uh, yeah, I support uh, anybody anywhere who uh, puts out a good product uh, into the uh, uh American market, the global market, any free market, you know, we're all human beings, you know, nobody's an alien on planet Earth, I mean, unless they are from outer space, but none of us are, so all this nonsense about nationalism and statism and patents, nonsense, they're all made up by those monarchs and kings and nobles over in Europe that, uh, you know, sent out these Dutch East India companies to conquer and, you know, loot the resources and grab people up and make them slaves. And, uh, you know, that some of that carried over into uh, North America and certainly slavery did. All those guys that held the, that secret meeting, most of them, they were like aristocrats, landed gentry guys, and they had slaves. You know, Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin. I mean, Thomas Jefferson had children with slaves. I mean, we would call somebody like that today a monster. You know, they those guys were from the so-called Enlightenment era, but I don't find them very enlightened at all. So, yeah, I'm for... Uh, great products from China and uh, these Everlast welders are one of them and uh, who knows I, I you know Everlast puts out uh, generators too that that may be next on my list someday down the down the pike but uh, right now I'm really enjoying uh, this uh, welder and uh, all the things that comes with it. it it really is I don't think you can find any other welder that uh, comes with two torches you know a torch is uh you know easily a hundred bucks or more and foot pedals a hundred bucks or more so just the fact that you get uh, a torch and a foot pedal uh you know that's that's about a 250 dollar value and you get two torches and that nice flow meter so you know if you bought most of these items after you purchased a, a lincoln or a miller you know, you'd undoubtedly spend a few hundred bucks more, and already those products cost twice as much as uh, the comparable unit uh, that uh, Everlast uh, sells. So, you know, I'm sold, man. I am sold.